All right, what's going on, guys? I am Bear to GDO. I'm here with Rampage Jackson, the one and only. We are here on the Jackson Podcast. And before we kick this off, we have an amazing guest. We just want to let you guys know you can head over to jackson.com and use promo code PODCAST15 and get 15% off all of our new drops, like our brand new Cubans, our new youth chains, as well as the women's collection for everybody out there looking to get your wife or your girl a gift. Don't forget, we have the number one selling chains in the world right now, our new Cuban 8mm, which comes in gold and silver. What a brand new option that you can get free engraving. And we're going to jump right into this podcast. And if you guys are looking for the clothes that myself or Rampage are wearing, it's on a different website, club.jackson.com. Rampage, it's good to have you back. I saw you running around Taiwan. Where were you? I was in Japan. Hong, Hong Kong? Japan and Vietnam. You texted me saying you were in Hong Kong, so I, no, no, I, thought, yeah. I looked at my tracker and I was Why were you in, in Vietnam? I got friends in Vietnam. <clears throat> No, serious. For real. So you went to Japan and Vietnam to visit friends? Yeah, I went to Japan to watch a fight, the Risen fight. Oh, okay. And then it's close to Vietnam, so I went to Vietnam just to visit my friends. We really? got a legend in the house. We right? got a legend. Man, we got a legend in the house. We haven't even announced him yet. He already talking hey, about, about Vietnam. Where's my red carpet? I ain't getting no red carpet. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, it was a bit bit of last minute. Hey, guys, we got Carl the heat. <laughs> per, per, where, did, where did the heat come from? The heat. I always, <laughs> what the I hell, asshole? I was <laughs> like, heat. Why would he call me heat? I always call you the heat. I always, I always did that. You never noticed that? Of course I did. And I always told me, why does he call me the heat? You're in heat all the time? Looking, My name is the heat. Yeah, are you name. looking for girls like you're in heat? No. No. Oh, you're way off. He's way off. Huh? The Heat's my fight name, Caro the Heat. Oh, but, that's, the but you heat. don't say the Heat. How do you say it? The, the heat. heat. Oh, got it. He makes fun of it. Yeah, I was like, that don't sound like the Heat. <laughs> yeah. Man. Man, I even got tattooed on my neck in Australia. You got you got the Heat tattooed on? Yeah. <laughs> I got all stupid. How you didn't have all those tattoos at first? Nah, I just, no. Dude, after, after I fought Nick Diaz, I even said, I'm going to get a tattoo on my arm. I told everybody, and I did, and then it became a habit. <laughs> you addicted to him now? No, 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 no. Mm. I, I'm not putting in bills on my body. It's fine. How long ago did you retire from MMA? I, who, you retired. I haven't seen you in UFC. That don't mean I retired. When, when was your last fight? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 15, 2015, 14. Oh, okay. 14, I was, my last fight was again, um, uh, what you gonna call it? Uh, I fought Baroni at oh. uh, the the other show. I uh, forgot the show's you forgot name. The name the show. Did you hear about what happened to Phil Baroni? No. What? He's in he's in um, prison in Mexico for murder. You didn't hear about this? Phil? Yeah, man. True story, man. Look, this is a true story. I was talking to him. I was in Japan the last time I was talking to him. Okay. And me and Antonio McKee was sitting in Japan because his son was about to fight. And, and Phil Baroni was looking for a fight. I asked Tony McKee, I said, hey, can you get him a bare knuckle fight? McKee was like, yeah, we can get him something. We was chatting and stuff like that. Okay. And then a couple of days later, because I had posted something on, on um, Phil Baroni's page, and a girl whose friend it was DM'd me and told me that Phil Baroni murdered her best friend. A couple of days after I talked to him. He's in jail, and he's in jail right now. Uh, Phil? But I don't, listen, he says he's innocent. Uh, I heard from the grapevine, his his lawyer said that he's innocent, that he went to the store and he came back and his girl was killed. His girl? He was dating a girl, whoever she was. Wasn't, didn't he have, was, he was married long to that, for a long time. No, he is, is the he, same girl? No, I don't know. I think, I think it's a different girl. He's, he was, he has been stuck in Mexico for a long time. He had been stuck there for at least a year. I owed him money because he, he got me, why are you laughing? I, I did. I, I did. I owe him money. I owe Phil Baroni money. I'm, you owe him Phil? It's supposed to be yeah. the other way around. No, no. I'm going to tell you why I owe him money. He, um, some guy. Don't veer off the subject. I'll get back. I'll tell you. What do you want? Tell me what happened. So. Okay. This is what he I heard. murdered. Apparently he murdered his girl and he's in, in Mexico in, in jail. The in the shower. Yeah. Um, in the shower. Yeah, she died in the shower. He he he. I think was he, it stab wounds? Was no, it a gunshot? The, no, just like um. Beating he, her. Head trauma, or something like that. Oh. Oh man. I can't believe you didn't hear about this. Crazy. No. But this this is how I owe him money. He some guy wanted me to do like an autograph signing at some type of Comic Con or some type of thing, and yeah. Phil Baroni set it up. So 
I, I'm the type of guy that whoever makes me money, I get. I like to give him ten percent. But he was in Mexico, I couldn't give him his money. I had been trying oh, to pay understand. him. I don't understand. What uh, I understand. So you owe him a okay. commission. Uh, yeah, oh, I yeah. thought you owed him money for like buying you a car or something. No, no, come no, on. no, no. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> no, I, he, that he one was, I doubt. He was trying to get me to do um, what you call this shit, um, Western Union or something. And who, Phil? Yeah, I, I was trying <laughs> to. Man, Western- I was friends with Phil. You know what I'm saying? Because I was training in Vegas at Randy's. You know, we were all. T- Everybody was there back then. Yeah. I mean, like everybody, yeah. even Vanderlei was there. Like you ev- train with Vanderlei, you trader. I thought you. Why was you man, I didn't train with him. I, he, he, the guy liked the way I fought. That's it. He always used to do see me and do this to me. Like you know, come on. Why you say that name to him though? Say again. Like why you name drop that? I no because he's looking at me. And I remember that Vandalay was there too. He was like two forty. Just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. Yeah, <laughs> man. You came I'm in, you have, about you have a lot of good I energy. All your asses, and you know it. <laughs> what do you Thank mean? You. What? Talk. Say it. I kick all their asses, Where? and he knows it. Where? Tell hey, hey. rampage talk. Hey, I'm what do you mean rampage talk? Hey, he's for, gonna tell you. I'm a t- I'm, I'm I can't tell you. tell you. I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> The heat, he can kick everybody's ass but mine, though. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> but, he can, but he's good, though. Listen, you have, have you ever seen him fight? Yeah, we... He, no, no, fuck the fighting. We're talking about the gym right here. Let, the, I mean, I, we would never fight, obviously. Rampage, yeah, you're too big. Yeah. But even yeah, at he, the... Yeah, like, he gets the best. He, yeah, I'm not... I'm, I'm going to keep 100 in the gym. He he, he got the best of me. <laughs> he, cause, look, you know what? Because he was the first guy... Are you on mushrooms? No. Oh. Right. He, he, the, he the first Excuse guy... Excuse me? You seem happy today. Oh, well, having, I'm excited. I'm on the podcast, you know. I'm, I'm talking. This, I haven't seen him in ages. This is this I'm is excited. him. This is how he always, he's always in a good mood. Yeah, you're in a very good mood. He walked in. We were playing his fights on the TV. And he goes, <laughs> oh, no, not this fight. And I turned around because I heard the door knock. I'm like, the door, DoorDash guy running in the studio. And I turned around and then it was him. He just walks in the office. He like <laughs> creeped up around us like a Navy SEAL. And then he just like whispers in behind my ear. Not this fight. I'm like, Who's behind you? I thought I saw him. And he's like, oh my God. I'm like, how you guys doing? I'm, I'm like, like, yeah, we have a podcast with you. I don't even know how long he was behind me, to be honest. Hey, don't he remind you of that guy from the end of the movie? Sneaky, sneaky, man. <laughs> <laughs> what movie was that? Mr. Deeds? <laughs> I'm he's a sneaky, dude from sneaky, Mr. Deeds. That's a sneaky guy. <laughs> you, black man in America making fun of me. <laughs> Let's let's kick it off with this. You fought the greats: GSP, Nick Diaz, Matt Serra, Tonio McKee. You have an incredible lineup. Yeah, man, I beat everybody's ass. <laughs> <laughs> I talk shit just like he does. I mean, you beat everybody but no, GSP no, no. on that list. Yeah. That was an insane list. Start with GSP. George. Break me down. Break me down. You're one of the earliest judo specialists in the UFC. Break it down. To He's me. the first. He was the first one trained by Judo Jean LaBelle. Do you you know who Judo Jean LaBelle is? I know who Judo Jean LaBelle is. I didn't know you were the first though. I just know you were one of the first. One of the earliest. He's the sure. first. No, there were first. judo guys that came into the game. Got it. Who? Chris Christoph Leninger. You don't know who he is. I don't He's know a him. judo guy. Was he in the UFC? Heavyweight. He, yeah, he came in he with the gi and fought Ken Shamrock and uh, he yeah. lost like this. Uh, yeah. yeah. So like that don't count. That's the judo <laughs> that came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came in with just like shorts, like just like anybody else, and I said, I'm gonna do judo. Watch. Well, I didn't even say that. It was just part of my repertoire, and I. I was able to do it, and I did it, and then I won, and that's it. And I was like, yeah. "Why is everybody so? Uh, how does it get him off the feet? Because in judo, you need a you need a uniform, you need a gi, and basically that's the main two things you need to grip. And who gets the better? It's a whole whole complex. And when I'm gonna explain judo, but everybody that watches any kind of throw. On any kind of platform, UFC, whatever, any throw they call Uchimara. Anything they do, they call it Uchimara. That's wrong? Yeah, that's wrong. What is it called? Well, some of the throws is Harai Goshi, Hani Goshi, Ogoshi. Anything they see that looks beautiful, like a judo throw, they call it, oh, that was beautiful, Uchimara. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, bro, no. That bothers you, huh? Of course it bothers me, man. That that was my livelihood. I was a judoka. When I fought MMA, it was vacation for me. <laughs> I swear to God, we were 16. We would go to this club in San Pedro every Monday. It was full cage combat. I was 16 and the guys used to be there, big dudes, they came to fight and 
they would have to pick some guy to fight me. I fought twice in one day. I beat some guy and I fought his coach. He was, coach was, <laughs> the coach was 250 pounds, bro. And he was really big, he was a big dude. And he, dude, he was trying to knock me out and I, I went crazy. And I slammed him so hard against the cage, it broke the cage. I threw him on the ground and I arm barred the same arm bar I caught a student with. <laughs> it was beautiful. Like you and your master can get yeah, it. Yeah, get your ass out of here, you stupid ass. Oh my. Dude, and I've, we've done that. It was me and my cousin Manny. Remember Manny? I remember, yeah, yeah, I remember Manny, yeah. Manny would do, <laughs> he would do the same, dude. It came to a point where uh, when they say, who wants to fight these guys? Nobody would say, <laughs> nobody would raise their hand. They were... But no, gotta, man, I'm not fighting that kid. I got a question, though. How, how did you do judo without the gi in MMA? How, did, how does that work? Well, um, that's the million-dollar question, ain't it? I know. That's mm. what I want to know. Mm. I'll tell you the honest truth. It's not something I can explain. It's impossible to explain it because imagine, first round, your opponent is already slippery. Yeah. But he's still got handles. And most of the time, the judo, real judo, is when you can throw somebody without a gi. And these are handles. So basically, it's all hip work. A lot of guys would come to my back thinking they're going to get my back. I was like, come on. Boom. And I would toss them. See ya. When they would get dumped, that two seconds, they would, it's a shock to anybody. I'm telling you. Nobody sees it. When I, when I was talking about that, you were watching me and Diego. Mm -hmm. In the first round, there was a throw I did. It was like a cartwheel. We both left him out, and he, nobody sees it, but he looks at me at, in that moment, and I look, and I'm like, did that really happen? Who, Diego Sanchez? Yeah, like. Did well, you beat I, him? No. Don't. I'm asking. I'm sorry. We're no, we outside. were just watching that fight. That's he the lost. fight. I was, it was the decision. I'm like, oh, uh, okay. I'm like, it may be split, and then they're like, oh, I went crazy, bro. I don't want to talk about it. But where were we? How do you, how, how did you feel that you did? How did you feel that judo was able to be used? Like, honestly, Bro, Rampage is saying, yeah, how, that, do, how oh, do you sorry. feel you yeah. were able to pull it off? So basically, it's when your opponent moves, he's dancing. And that's when judo comes in. Mm. You know, big guy can come after you. There's a throw that you can do, just like a like tuck and roll, and he'll roll over you. You can throw a 500-pound man over you. Mm. Right. Grabbing, tucking, and rolling. You understand? So judo is one of those, you know, it's a lot of footwork. I would go with Randy Couture. He was 245. Randy, boom. I would just foot sweep him. He would go up, boom. And he would laugh. He'd be like, I hate you judo guys. He, you know, because he's Greco, you know, Randy. And then I would have tougher time with Tito. Tito would go, go for legs. Yeah. yeah, he still would take me down, but still. You know, I would have to get the same lock on them. And I had a number on these uh, wrestler guys, a lot of these wrestlers, like Sean Shirk. I fought Shirk when I was 17. You, you feel like judo is better than wrestling and, and mixed martial arts? No, I'm not. No, 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 I'm no. I'm just no. asking. I did wrestling when I fought as well, mm. didn't I? Yeah. When I fought Nick, I was picking him up from double legs, single legs, because he's so tall. So... You have to have a mixture, wrestling and judo. In MMA, you need to have everything. There's nothing, oh, stay away. Yeah, stay away from some of that <laughs> shit people do. We'll and then we'll touch you. <laughs> If I touch you three days later, your organs, dude, there were people saying shit like that in the gym. He goes, I can do something to you. Three days later, your organs will fall off. <laughs> what do they call that, black magic? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they, Tai Chi something. I don't know, bro. I mean, the guy was like talking stuff, but the stuff he was yeah. saying was ridiculous. Did you know I, I fought a um, judo Olympic gold medalist? Yoshida? No, no. Um, damn, I can't remember his, I can't remember his name now. Takimoto? Uh, I Where? Fought, I fought him in Bellator. Um, he and a, heavy, heavyweight. He was a he was a gold medal, a Japanese gold medalist in judo. Whoa, 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 whoa. I kicked his ass. Hang on a second, man. You're so stop. <laughs> Who were you talking about? First of all, some Japanese name. Why are you freaking out? I kicked it. I'm I, not freaking. I kicked it. Huh? Is that Satoshi? Yeah, yeah. Satoshi Ishi. Oh, oh yes. Satoshi yeah. Ishi. Yeah, he's. I, I, he's. Was he recent champion? 
recently. Uh, uh, recent in, 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 in judo. Yeah, judo. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I haven't followed that. Oh, you haven't followed time. it, yeah. But did you ever fight Yoshida? No, I was, I was, I was in a tournament with him, but they yeah. played Vanale against him. Did you train with them? No, Yoshida was in the same judo weight class as I was. In the 92 Olympics, he beat one of my, you know, let's just say coaches and a friend, Jason Morris, in the finals with an Uchimara, mm. Ippon. It wasn't really Ippon, but they, anyway, they, they, call, it they call that, Ippon is like, what it's is, done. Oh, like it's, it's like yeah. 10 points, you're done. Oh. <clears throat> so Yoshida, when I saw him fighting in Pride, I was like, oh my God. He was fat. Mm. Dude, he was out of shape. He was, I'm telling you, he wasn't training for fighting, bro. Mm. If he trained, he trained to try to look. Because in judo, if you watch Yoshida and another guy named Koga do throws, mm. you, won't, you won't even believe it. For, it is, like, bro, it's unbelievable. Was he that good at judo, Yoshida? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Olympic what? champion. Are you kidding me? It's I unbelievable, no bro. I had no idea he was an Olympic it's champion. Awesome people. Like, I've seen the highlights. Olympic judo champion, and he went up to 90 kilos. He was unbelievable. But there was better uh, Japanese judokas, way better than him. Mm. But he was the one that came. Nakamura. So yeah. that guy, I didn't know he was a judo guy. He saw me at Randy's. He, go, he started bowing. I'm like, no, no, no. Like, I've seen him. I was like, and then he tells me he's a judo guy. And. I went with him. He didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I threw him. When I, when I, I looked through the- You're not supposed so to throw heavyweight judo guys like that, man. I threw him. You were probably just yeah. way better than him. Nah, I wasn't it. Maybe he was just being respectful, but it was just weird. I, was, I don't know, bro. It was a weird one. When I looked through your UFC list and a lot of people that would look at the, the fights you had, I mean, just speaking with a guy like GSP, you were one of the first to go the distance oh, George, with a guy like yeah, him. George. Talk to me about George. the George St. Pierre fight. What was it like fighting him? Did well, you know just how big of a star he was? It was very early in the career, both of us. Got I you. mean, <laughs> I'll tell you something with this in a second. But um, it was very early in our career, boss. It was his, it was his first fight. It was my second fight. And uh, there was the hype again. And I'll never forget, I, I was trying to put him in my guard to tap him out, put him in the guard, because I was coming so close, so close, like arm triangle. Uh, and then even the third round, I even threw him over me again. And po- he, see, nobody knows. George's muscles went, bzz, 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 like they rolled up on the last arm bar in the third round when I was trying to like, I had no more energy to keep my base on him, but I was just trying to break his arm. And he told me I had enough air in my lungs, he said, to do one bridge. He bridged, he went back into my guard, third round, like that was the end of it. And that, that just, and I just, and then kept on fighting and then decision, he took it. And that's it. But, and then he fought Mayhem. Who fought Mayhem? Uh, GSP. Mm-hmm. That's right, he did. I forgot about that Dude, fight. Because he came at me. Carlo, Carlo, man, I fight these guys. I said, I said, what's his name? I said, I, I beat him. Uh, you'll, you'll, do, you'll do good. I said, I beat him. You should beat him. He was like, oh, man. Carlo, man, thank you for telling me, man. Because he really, really takes it in, bro. He's yeah. so nervous. Yeah. I'm not going to put him home because I love him. He's a good guy. He even told me he's 30% Armenian. GSP? Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't know that I never, either. I never heard that. I never heard that. Hey, I don't care where y'all heard it. He told me, and I'm telling you. <laughs> he said he's 30% Armenian. He came up to me. He's like, Carl. Is it real, or was that just respect for you? No. That, cool. No, I, no. No? No. No. All right. No, of course not. Okay. Who would you respect that much to say I have 30% of your blood in me? No, nobody. And plus, he beat me. So he came up, he's just like, hey, girl, you know, I just want to tell you I'm 30% Armenian. I was like, from where? What, from what direction? <laughs> yeah, and it, was, it was from his aunt and stuff. I don't know, bro. That's what he told me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, after GSP, I, I know you went to fact. WEC, you secured the strap, right? You went yeah. and got the belt. Yeah. And then you returned you return back to the UFC. You fi- fired Nick off Diaz. three big wins. You had the Diaz, you had the Sarah, and you had the... Lytle, the Lytle Chris Lytle fight was right after Nick Diaz fight. And then they gave me Sarah and then it was Hughes. And then somebody bit my fucking hamstring. Excuse my Turkish. 
No. Someone who, bit your hamstring? Who bit your hamstring? Man, you were there. I don't... My, my when it was, popped. But who bit it, though? Fucking mayhem. He didn't bite it. You know, he when we were rolling you, around... You training, with, yeah. Dude, you guys thought I broke my... You carried me to my car. He, he wanted to take me what? home. I, yeah, we were all training there. What do you mean? I, 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 my memory's really bad. This, you don't remember carrying man, a guy McKees, to his car? When you, see, when you were like, that's not a ring, that's a phone booth. And we were all, ah, ah. Do you remember now? Damn. I remember that, yeah, I remember I that little bit of his ring. Too. I remember that little bit of his ring. He's like, y'all get in the ring. I'm like, what's, what's homeboy talking about? That ain't no ring, it's a phone booth. <laughs> Where in Long Beach? Yeah, in Cerritos. Oh, Antonio, Cerritos, Antonio yeah. McKee. Cerritos, the body shop. Out the body shop. Yeah. His, his ring. He, had, he put a ring there. His ring was a little bit bigger than his table. But even I, even had cockroaches. <laughs> and and his brother Derek is a cockroach specialist. <laughs> <laughs> no, Antonio McKee told me why he had the ring so small. Okay. He said he he wanted the. Why are you laughing? Uh, I'm, why, I'm sorry. I'm why sorry. Laughing, why are you laughing? No, 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 no. What did he say? What, why was the ring so small? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Right. My apologies. Right. What be, was it? Don't be laughing at Antonio McKee. He's a great coach. I saw you laughing. I kick his ass. <laughs> I already did. And he knows it. And you know it. Hey, I'm going to go. <laughs> I fought I Antonio. Him, I, I, I got no problems with Antonio. He's one of the greatest coaches, you, in, he's the greatest coach one of the greatest coaches in MMA. Amazing coach. Amazing coach. Yeah. That's why I would come yeah. to his gym. Yeah. I got nothing bad to say about him. Y'all instigating. <laughs> Y'all making shit up. I'm not I'm making fucking people up right now. <laughs> yeah, you don't want smoke with him. No, I'm going to tell you why he said the ring was so... <laughs> hey, you ready to go, huh? No. So you ain't retired. Not officially. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. His ring was so small because he wanted to p push action. He wanted he wanted people mm -hmm. to just be in each other's face, not running. I understand. It was but just, it, the ropes but were really small. It was really small. It, it was a like phone a little booth. man's. I've been there. It's a it's a the the the, the whole gym's about years, the size of this office. But this was years ago. That was a oh, this wow. was years ago. Two thousand six, bro. So I so you was going with mayhem and you pulled a hamstring. Yeah, and it and it was popped. right before one of your fights, right? Before Matt Hughes' fight. Yeah, I remember. that's what we were rolling. Dude, it popped my what out. I, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel I feel I want to throw up off the pain. And I held, I was like, this. He's like, Carl, like, oh my shirt, mayhem. And that was the beginning. Man, of he's the talking, end. he's talking like yeah. uh, like 17 years ago or more, man. Yeah, man. 2005, dude, that was 22. Uh, I had my title shot with Hughes already. 20 when I was 21, I came in. I. I uh, Dave Strasser was number 10. I beat him. I, I'll, my, I made top 10. And then they, whoever they gave me, it was GSP. And after GSP, they took me to WEC. Shoney Carter. Oh, it was yeah. five, five, five times he held the belt. You I remember, beat Shoney. Remember him? Yeah. Mr. International? Yeah, yeah, because he won He's the awesome. belt in WEC. Yeah. They, but why'd you come right back? Because uh, they brought me back to fight Nick Diaz. They, or, they told me, uh, you know who's they? Well, the UFC. Oh, got it. UFC said, "Listen, um, if you're gonna fight Carter, make sure to beat him. I, I, I gotta bring a winner back. With all the respect, Shoney was much older. I was young. I was like, that's fine. Let me just handle it. And I snapped the groin nerve before that fight. I used to sit down and just do curls all freaking day. Go curl at to tie my legs together." which didn't really help. And I would grapple this way and I still rear naked choke guys. And then basically I fought Shoney just doing shit like this, bro, I swear. But, and then once the fight was over, Nick was there. I, you know, he shook my hand and all that stuff, which is not Nick Diaz at all. But mm. so <clears throat> after that, they called me for Nick Diaz. And Nick, Nick had just fought Robbie Lawler. He had just mm. knocked out Robbie. Oh, wow. What do you remember about fighting Nick Diaz? That was a big win for you. I remember being super freaking tired, bro. Yeah. The thing about Nick and Nate is they set a pace. It's not like Romero, what, Yoel. Yeah. It's, he's, it's not like, that. boom, he just explodes. And if he explodes, boom, something's going to cut or put you out like that. They're not that way. A day and they'll weather that storm and they put the same pace on you again. That, up, up, and you get tired and you start to break and then, then they finish you off. Look at Paul Daly and Nick Diaz, the perfect fucking example. Mm -hmm. Dude, Paul Daly 
Paul Daly hits hard. You know it and I know it. And you know about, you, you've seen yeah, him fight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He hits hard and he puts people out cold for days. Nick was still slapping in. He hit Nick right off the bat. Nick fell down, all fours, but he wasn't out, stood up, and then he started going to the body. Dude. Great man. boxing, great boxing. But, you know, it's not about the power, and it, it was it was about that pace, boss. Dude, you hit me. You thought you almost finished me, but I'm up and I'm coming again. Dup, dup, dup. Anyway, he had a, his head was like a water cooler. He had a big head, Nick Diaz. <laughs> And every time I throw it, no, nothing wrong. Nick is a big guy, dude. Nick is big, yeah, yeah. bro. That's why he can fight Anderson Silva. Nick is that big and that good, bro. I'm, you know, I'm not saying anything, but every time I throw an overhand, I would hit his collarbone, you know? Are you okay? No, I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, we, I'm we, friends we, with this, Nick. I'm yeah. friends with Nick. So no, I like, is, I like hearing is, it, yeah. And this is very interesting to me. Yeah. So. Nick yeah. Diaz, bro. Dude, you have to be, I was in the best shape. I mean, I, I had to be in the best shape of my life to fight him because it's impossible. Because he keeps the same pace, even on the ground. If you remember my fight with him, it was standing ground, standing ground. And when he, he's the only dude, look, I'm going to be honest. Usually anybody I fight, eventually they're going to start backpedaling. I don't give a fuck who you are. Nick had me backpedaling in the second round. Why? Well, because I couldn't take him down and he was staying here and he was pecking at me. Now, yeah, nothing was hurting, but he's taking points and he's beat me there. <clears throat> and go, of course, yell and take him down. I'm like, I'm fucking trying. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, thank you. I go, mean, go, he has man, incredible jujitsu as well, though. I mean, his jujitsu. I wasn't scared was about nobody's jujitsu, bro. I, I remember when we hit the ground, yeah. it was, he took the back and then I go, I take the Kimura and then he rolls and then he takes my back and then I roll, take Dickie's back and then we both stand up, you know, and they're talking all about uh, Yeah, that was the best. Yeah. That was the best of, that yeah. best of us. That was yeah. the best of Nick. That was best of me. I mean, we did it on our, pro I mean, well, what can I say? Yeah, you're you know? young and you're prime. Are, I, um, are you a black belt in jujitsu as well? Yeah. Why you say it like that? I didn't. I didn't know that. I thought you were just a black belt in judo. <laughs> Man, I, why you say it like that? Like I disrespected you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Who, what, from go kart. Yeah, bro. Jujitsu, judo. You have to understand jujitsu. <clears throat> jujitsu is judo on the mat. It's called newaza, meaning, uh, you know, basically not standing judo, on the mat judo. And arm bars, triangles, gi chokes, that's why it's very easy for us to do jiu-jitsu. Yeah. So I'm telling you. Yeah, I saw that when I, when, I, when I saw judo for the first time. I was like, these motherfuckers doing jiu-jitsu with slams, with throws. With slams. Drew, that's, that's what judo is. Boom. Dude, so many good guys, dude. Like... Judo guys that are amazing on the ground. Mm. Uh, uh, Jimmy Pager was a uh, 1999 world champion from the US. We don't have too many. Mm. He was one of them. He was amazing on the ground. Mm. Sebastian Pereira from Brazil. Oh, uh, what was the other guy's name, dude? There was another guy that was unbelievable. Flavio Canto on the ground too. Like he would drag you, bro. And do you know the history of judo, though? I, I, I know the as history. As much as I need to know, yeah. It, um, this Jewish guy invented it. Hell no, man. What? Stop, stop. What Jewish guy invented judo? It's a Jewish guy. He he invented judo. He was a Jewish guy. He was really good at judo, and he was beating it. People was always trying to take his money, right? He was getting, <laughs> what? He was getting bullied. So he had, he, he used was to. Was it here in the state? No, uh, over there, over there, okay. and he and he used to walk around with a robe on, cause he, cause so he, he was always walking around with a robe on, and people was always trying to take his money, so he was like, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this new move where I choke everybody out with my robe and everything, and he invented it, and then this Mexican guy stole it and called it Mexican judo, where he was like, you don't know I got a knife, you don't know I got a gun, and that's where it all started. Like then the Japanese people took it over, and then Japanese people they. They they made it like the bomb. So this Jewish guy, you don't even know this. A Jewish history. guy, it's history. A Jewish guy started. Thank judo. you for the history lesson in judo. You welcome, brother. Now I understand. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> what am I doing all these fucking years? <laughs> you doing? The, you was doing a yeah. Japanese judo. Hey man, that saved my life, man. Don't be saying shit like that about judo. Don't talk about judo like that. I love, I love judo. judo. I dump your ass too. One I time, dump one you. time, one yeah. time, one time, Where? one time. Pop, you, real nah, naked joke. Pop, nah, real naked joke. Now nah, you got me one time and I wasn't warmed up. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't warmed up. I, was, nah, okay. I wasn't ready. We were doing rounds. Nah, what are you <laughs> talking about? He's lying. He wasn't warmed up. I wasn't warmed up. Yeah, he wasn't warmed up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he wasn't warmed up. If he was warmed up, you wouldn't probably be able to do it as as hey, smooth. I, yeah, what do you know? I just seen him fight. Yeah. I'm the best. I, hey, I'm dude, the best. I don't care who you see fight. I know what I did. I know where it was, and you know it. <laughs> hey, the heat. I'm the best. <laughs> but you know what? Out of everybody, I swear, you know how much I respect him and love him because he was the only guy that would, in, after practice, he, he would pull me in and say, Carl, you need to believe in your hands more. He would always tell me, believe in your hands. I'm telling you. I swear to God, you would always tell me. You got good stand up. I know. When every time we would spar, you were like, "No, Cara, I can't, st I can't do it with you because you're too good. I'm gonna throw a shot." You would tell him, "Believe in your hands." He was the one that always told me that. Mm. And then I started coming with punches, man. I started understanding. I was like, "Why don't I start punching, dude?" I always did. I know, but you but when he told me, I, I was like, "Okay, I got the fuel now, rampage." I love it. And he throws bombs. So I'm like, all right. Yeah, I always train with these guys and, and him, and he's kicking everybody's ass in the gym, be honest. But a lot of times he, he wasn't, like, confident See? with his hands. Not for real. He was, I didn't have confidence. I was... Bah, bah, boom. But, but his hands was good, though. Yeah. But he, he relied a lot on the judo and the submission on the ground. I fought and Mayhem, and then I fought Antonio, and then I fought uh, Fernando Vasconcelos. I don't know that one. Frank Triggs, Jiu-Jitsu coach, two-time Mundial Jiu-Jitsu world champion. Mm. He was the coach in, uh, right there in Tricks, where Trick used to train with Matt Yushenko and stuff. Oh. Uh, Veteran Matt Yushenko? Yeah, that yeah. Was my, that was my coach in wrestling in, in college. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. He was Ukrainian. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw him training for the UFC back before I even knew what the UFC was. And he used to use us as, as fucking wrestling dummies and kick our ass. He he would grab our hands and just throw us over with like like judo. And I saw him do, I saw him do a hundred uh, one pull hand up. pull ups in the gym. One hundred. And he was okay. If you go to Ukraine, bring some monsters. That's what when I when I talk about judo, bro. This is why I I would laugh on MMA. I was like, who are they? Because judo was such a high level of a sport, like. If you watch, I watch a guy named Nick Gill. He's Canadian, uh, amazing judoka. Like he came out of the freaking elevator. He was half the elevator. He was so <laughs> wide. There's no weight class in heavyweight. Of course there is. He, well, I, he was he was hundred kilo. Like judo champs, when you look at them, bro, they're really they're like you can tell, bro. Their hands, you know how strong they are. I mean, imagine when they talk about my hand strength grip and all that stuff. Imagine heavyweights. So the guy you beat, I mean, you did a great job. But if you ever did judo with him, you put a key on. Oh no, my, I wouldn't. He, I he wouldn't. torture you. Yeah, bro. I wouldn't dare. Torture anybody. You know how I beat him? You know how I beat him? You knocked him out? No, I didn't knock him out. I beat him by decision, if I can remember. But I had to keep his hips away from me. Ah. That's how I beat exactly. him. Exactly. You put your hand. Yeah. He I trained with Antonio McKee. Antonio mm. McKee. He yeah. taught me that long Yeah, time if you stop the hips, they can't, they can't, well, you have to get somebody to move. Yeah. I always got people to move. I don't care if you're going to be standing right there. And then I'm going to, because I, I got stand up too. So it was never, yeah. Yeah, I was, was just throw a hand. Yeah. And let me just get But you it. see, you wasn't where, you wasn't, you, when you were in a fight, it's like you had no fear. You didn't care. You had like, I, if I remember, you had like one speed. Yeah, yeah. You went out there and you, you remember, just, I remember, from, bro. Yeah. Dude, I even flipped them off. And he said, what you want, though? You want something? <laughs> I never forget him. Why'd you flip him off? No. Well, hang on, man. Hang on. This guy, too. Yeah. Well, I'm fighting Mayhem Miller. Man, we was like and brothers. I'm on like side control. Like and, and Tito's there. And Tiki's there. And Routine punishment. Rampage is there. And there. And I think somebody was cursing on the side. I don't know who it was. It, it, might, it wasn't them. It might have been Tiki. <laughs> it might have been. I don't know. <laughs> 
Because because I was friends with Tiki too. I slept. That is like I've had, I had a relationship with all these dudes. Yeah, you yeah. slept with Tiki? No, fucker. <laughs> what? This time? I slept at his house. Oh, like, okay, I'm sorry. Was I, what I'm the fuck? Rampage. Come on, man. You know I got to oh, Come man. on, man. You know I got to joke around. Come on. Man, you... no, that, that's too deep. That's disgusting. <laughs> that's what she said. <laughs> oh, man. You know I joke around. Come on. I, I haven't changed, brother. I haven't changed. I know we old men now. Yeah. But I haven't that changed. Ain't... You got gray hair, man. You <laughs> he old, don't look man. old. Wait, but well, I want to hear the rest. So someone flipped you off? Okay, or yeah, you yeah, flipped yeah. off someone? No, you said somebody flipped you off in the cage, and you you think it was no, cheeky. yeah. So no, no, not flip me up. They were cur they cursed when I was a side control, beating the shit out of mayhem. I heard somebody cursing at me, <laughs> and I looked and I see them, and I'm like, what? Team punishment. What? And I flipped them off, and I start hitting them. I swear, and I remember Rampage saying, "What you want, dog? You want some?" I was like, "Hang on, hang on," <laughs> and I'm beating, and then I I won the fight. It was, I got tired of beating Mayhem up. The, 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 the freaking judge threw the towel in saying, stop the fight. The judge I, can't, threw the towel. I can't watch this anymore. And they stopped the fight. So I won and I came out and I'm sitting, and then I run into Rampage. Was this our first time? But it, first time ever, but it was not hostile. It, I, I remember you said, I, I put my hand up and then you put your hand up. I did this. I said, bro. No disrespect, you know. And then, I don't know, we just made help. It, like, we didn't do anything. It was all good. It was all good. Yeah, we've been friends ever yeah. since. And then, I, that's it. And then, that's it. We've just been friends, bro. Like, always cracking. Because I, you know, I had yeah. nothing against nobody. No. Somebody cursed at me. I'm like, no. what? Fuck you guys. Yeah. You and know? my little brother love him. And my little brother don't like nobody. Ever. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, you, you have great energy. We can we can feel it. We can see it. Talk to me about Joe Rogan. What's your experience with Joe Rogan? You know him, you, you, you grappled with him, wrestled with him, did some jujitsu with him? Yeah, I know. Well, he was at the bomb, bomb squad. Was it, was it called the bomb squad? No. Santa Monica. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a Muay Thai school and then it was with Eddie and they would, they would work out there. So I, I would go sometimes and work out with Eddie and the guys and get some grappling in. And, uh, and Joe was there. And you know, you rode with him before, yeah. Yeah, pretty, is he pretty good? This this he, was years ago, though. Huh? Yeah, this is years ago. This oh. is in my prime, but oh, he, he he was just starting out. Judicial. No, no, he was, um, he's, dude, he was very good, he's amazing, he was great. But like, if I, you know, like, I remember actually arm barn easily, and I think he I heard him and he got up and he was, I said, I'm so sorry, Joe. He said, I'm fine, I'm fine. And he just walked off, but I was like, man, I felt bad. But I didn't even, I didn't even do anything with jerk. I, I did nothing. He probably uh, talked shit about you in one of your fights after that. Then he was commentating one of your fights. Talking. Actually, no, man. He actually, he never did, huh? He loved grapplers, though. Yeah. So if you watch me in GSP, it's almost biased what Joe can say, and I'm like, I love it. I'm like, hell yeah, Joe. Thank you, brother. What about because it? any because the fight was so close yeah. each time. Like I said, it was an arm triangle that was almost gone, and then you know I, his arms opened up like it's any second, you know, and then boom. Yeah, I let everybody like those down. Those fights hunt you when it's like it dirty. haunted it's, me. Like yeah. I didn't leave my room for two weeks. Cop pulled me over. I had three stitches. Cop pulled me over, and I just looked at him. Yeah, I said, "Can I go home?" And he said. Yeah, bro, go home. That's, I swear to God, I was so much in thoughts and I was just getting off the exit and I go, woo, pulls me over and just looked at my face. He saw the stitches. I said, can I just go home, man? He said, go, bro, you didn't give me a ticket or nothing. Yeah, I don't think people yeah. understand how, how much the fights hunts us when we lose and how, how much it, it, it Especially if that kind of a fight. Yeah. I can't imagine. You know, for the rest second, of your life, bro, you think, you think about it for the rest of your life. Yeah. Especially when it's close and you're like, oh, if I would've just did just a little bit more. Like the Diego fight? Yeah. Like that fight? Diego Sanchez, that's in 2006. You had Randy and Tito Ortiz in your corner. You yeah. Know, how, how were they both in your corner? I just, I trained with both. They was uh, cool back in the day. Randy, yeah, yeah. Ran and Tito was cool back in the day. Yeah. yeah, no, but they didn't have anything toward each other. They we all trained together. Randy always had good stuff to say about Tito. He's the strongest guy probably he said I ever fought physically. Um, there was no animosity, nothing. They 
they came, they cornered me. They were both awesome. My That's cousin. before they fight. That's before they fought each other, right? No, that no. This is after they after. already fought. This I, is I, UFC really? 44. This I was, was on that card debut. His oh. UFC 44 welterweight debut. I, that I was in Tito's my, corner. I was in Tito's corner when they fought. Yeah, that was you. Were you was, in Randy's corner? No, I, that was UFC 44. Okay. That was my UFC debut. No, I yeah. fought. No, I fought yeah. UFC 44. I lost. No, his no. UFC debut was UFC 44. He was a welterweight. Dave Strasser, bro. I fought. He goes like, no, <laughs> my first fight. No, 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 no. You're right. I was thinking UFC 144. No, 44. Okay. UFC 44. Okay, okay. It was Gan McGee against Tim Sylvia. And it was Oh my god, remember those guys? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was real cool with uh Tim Sibia. Yeah. I didn't um, know the other McGee. I didn't know the McGee. I didn't know any of them, bro. I just remember seeing their I remember their names and then it was Randy and Tito. Yeah. Two, and, and you was there at the event. Yeah, I fought the last they showed my fight on pay-per-view because I finished Dave Strass. So didn't you guys watch that fight? I mean, we've been watching your fights all day, yeah. No, when I, it was my first fight, and I threw, it was like a you pretty flipped finish, them. flipped him, and I caught him. I'm going to go back and watch your fights after this. And uh, that, that was the one, and then I got the best fight. There, I'm sitting there after the first UFC fight. I'm sitting next to Tito. We're on, the, and then they were like, on the best submission night. They didn't tell my name. I'm like, just out of nowhere. I'm like, what the hell? And then you just gave me this big plaque that said tap out. I was like, Where, where's my hundred grand now, man? Because right. they, they started paying after those. Bro, you know. bro, I'm going I'm to suggest something. I'm going to suggest you you um, text Uncle Dana and put like his highlights on UFC Fight Pass. Oh, you need to. Oh, cause, cause, that's what we watched it on today. On Fight Pass? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, so it's, it's on there? I think that's what we were watching. We, we were watching your highlights when you walked in is on it, UFC Fight is Pass. It, is it on really? UFC Fight Pass? Well, I, I didn't know. I didn't know what, what it was. I thought... I kept on walking, and I'm you like, might, "You might be right, though. We should, we yeah. should probably put in a call and try to get those on fight." Because I feel like I feel like um, uh, Cairo Parisian, and, and 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 you know, saying I feel like it was like a little bit before your time. I, I feel like the UFC, they go, they missed out on a, on a bunch of you know, saying legends like you. You know, Us, what I'm saying yeah, we got it was like you were like a little bit before the time. What's up, Shane? We we in the middle of a um, podcast right now, brother. Are are you here? My dad, because we coming down, uh, and my dad's, you know, me and my dad's gonna do the podcast, but uh, he has his monkey with him, and I wasn't know if it was cool. Yeah, bring the monkey, but we, yeah, 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 we yeah. need it on the podcast. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, you guys good, man. Y'all family, man. It's all good. Hey, no, no, I know, but I, I just don't know. You know no, 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 no. It's all good. No, no, it's all good. We, we family, bro. All right, all right, all right. We'll be down there. Uh, we'll be there in like uh, 30 minutes. All right. So, all right. I'm, I gotta Sorry about that. I got to go to the bathroom. And then this is this, and then you can run through these, and then I'll be off for the next 22 minutes. All right. And then I'll come back if you guys are still on. You're fucking one of the funniest dudes I've ever had on a podcast. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't see you anymore. No, I'm going to try to come right back. Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah that, that guy, he's um he's, he runs the whole company and shit. That motherfucker, that motherfucker busy as hell. And I'm... I'm this was like last minute. We made this happen. Oh, I appreciate it. No, no, it. I, 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 want, I, wanted, I, I wanted to... My work. cousin... This guy at Wee Shop, and he's like, hey, 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 have you seen Rampage's podcast? It's blowing up. It's the shit. I'm like, Rampage? You see, if he had said some, uh, somebody else, all right. But when he said Rampage, I'm like, whoa, I'm cool with Rampage. Let me just hit him up. I'm like, well, and then I got you. I'm like, yeah, hey, cool. I wanted to make I wanted to make this happen. But we, but the problem with the schedule was um, I might be fighting soon, so we was trying to uh, fighting. When are you gonna fight? I'm, a, I'm, I'm thinking about doing boxing. I want, boxing I want, fight? I want, yeah, I want to do some against boxing. against who? The first fight is supposed to be against this guy named Shannon Briggs. I don't know if you watch. I him. know Shannon Briggs. Let's go, champ! <laughs> Come on, man, Shannon Briggs. Yeah. Shannon <laughs> Briggs, man, he gets fucked up in the movie. Uh, the, uh, with Jason Statham, yeah, he gets yeah. real fucked up. With yeah. that. damn. <laughs> you know, I, you know, that was supposed, I was supposed to be in that movie. That's supposed to be me. Oh man, but I had a scheduling conflict. I know, but, uh, but I've got so many freaking uh, things for me, bro. I was fighting. Now, that's right. Uh, uh, Judo Gina Bell was putting you in movies. Yeah, yeah man. I, I I had a sag. I was sag since I was fifteen. I remember that. I didn't go to school. I was making two grand a week. Two days just to stunt up before an actor. Yeah. I had I, my star wagons and shit. 
Yeah, I, I knew all the actors. I forgot about that because uh, Judo Jean LaBelle, he was in a lot of movies. Dude, too. you have no idea, dude. You know, some, some of the actors I met and they came to Mayhem's fight. You know who? Who? You remember King Kong, 2006 King Kong? That movie? Yeah. yeah. The captain, the white guy. I don't think so. Yeah. The guy that gets everybody. Oh, yeah. He came? Uh, he's the captain and he's the one that has those big, he goes like, you want to catch the ape? He goes, I don't think so. That guy, he's a big time actor, he's mm. German guy. I probably know his face. Oh, you know his face? And the other one is in, in Inglorious Bastards. He's the other German guy. Mm. Those guys are like huge in oh, Germany. Hold on, the German guy, is that the same guy from the movie Django? No. I like no. that actor, I forgot. His oh, name. maybe, I don't know. I don't Inglorious know. Bastards, was he the main character? Inglorious Bastards. Was he was he was he the uh, the guy was in that movie? Um, what's that movie they did that 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 they remake the Bruce Lee movie? Uh, uh, oh, Dra oh, Enter the Dragon. No, 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 no. It was the Bruce Lee. The one Bruce. It was like a TV show. Oh, TV the Green show. Hornet. The Green, Green Hornet. Hornet. Was yeah. he was he the actor that was in the Green Hornet? No, okay, I don't think I'm so. Bad, I'm bad with actors' names. Hey, but uh, he got some questions here. He want me to ask you. Did, did you got banned from the UFC? A lifetime ban? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. He said... Oh. Well, they said, and then I came back and fought again. So yeah. how can that be a ban? Yeah, they said, the UFC gave you a lifetime ban after two fights. And then I... Which is bullshit. <laughs> mm. <laughs> who, was the, who was the hardest hitter you ever faced in, in the UFC? Or in, in your oh. career? Well, you know, if I stood in front of somebody, any of those guys, and I had them punch me as hard as they could... That way I could tell, <laughs> but I didn't do that. I'll tell you, uh, Tiago hit me behind the ear. Tiago Silva? No, Tiago Alves. Alves. Tiago punched me right behind the ear, and I had never felt that. My Like, I got, like, electricity going through my body. <laughs> like, that kind of a... <laughs> but I was still on my feet. I was fine. Mm. But that hit behind the ear mm. that's how people get dropped because now i understood and yeah. even matt sarah first 10 seconds he drops me with a right hand yeah that's i go one two boom my knees buckled i went face down it was almost over and then when i stood up i said i swear to god i'm gonna show i want to show your moms oh man i went insane bro i went crazy like you fucking knocked me and then in breast it was over Third round, Randy Couture was icing my elbows, bro. Well, you was elbowing them? Because I was hitting Matt. Matt is, the, dude, he's very tough. Matt's, anybody else would have quit. Be, halfway through the fight, they would have quit. Matt was still trying to go. I mean, I gave him real bad beating, dude. Yeah, he, he, third look, he looks like a little tough guy. You remember um, he upset um, GSP? Yeah, he knocked out GSP. Yeah. After I fought him, him, Chris Lytle, I sent all those guys back to the comebacks. <laughs> that's the fucking truth and that's a fact. Yeah. And then I'll never forget, it was me, Tito, and everybody else up in Big Bear and we were, they were watching The Ultimate Fighter and it was the it was the comebacks. And when they came to Chris Lytle, Matt Sarah, I was the last guy they lost to us. <laughs> It was me, and they were showing me dumping him, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, what, what, to everybody, you know? And then they're like, Matt Sarah's last lawsuit, <laughs> beating his ass. I won that, <laughs> and then it was like, damn, what? And then that was after the Diego fight, and they were trying to get on my nerves. Damn, dog, what happened to you? I was like, shut up, Tito would get yeah, on my yeah, shit. Yeah, Tito, get on your shit like that. <laughs> no, but I was like, Tito Ortis, be careful. <laughs> Some old lady is like, excuse me, is that Tito Ortis? <laughs> In Big Bear, Tito Ortis, <laughs> Tito Ortiz. How did you get Tito? That's 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 not an American name, dude. It was in Vegas during the morning. We're having breakfast. Some two old ladies are sitting next to each other. He gets up and leaves to get go to the restroom. <laughs> They're like, "Is that Tito Ortiz?" <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, yeah, that's Tito Ortiz, ma'am. Yeah, that's that's him." <laughs> hey, Tito. <laughs> she probably saw his name in print. 
Yeah. <laughs> she that, did. Yeah, she didn't hear it. And she wrote it, and she said it just the way they were. They write it. <laughs> hey, your your last fight in the UFC, you was two and eight years old. You don't remember? Man, How old are you now? 41. I just turned 41, August 28th. Man, you young, man. Well, com- compared to you, yeah, I am young. That's fucked up for you to say that, bro. No. I know, no. And I you're know. still fighting and no, I'm not. No. I'm the fucking loser, no, not I, you. I, I, I thought we was I thought we was bros and you going to say We something. always like we always bros. Look at you. You have no uh, gray hair, man. I got gray hair. You got nothing. Well, I got no hair. I'm fucking bald. No, you're not. You shave it. I'm fucking bald. This is a tattoo. What are you talking about? That's I'm fucking your, bald. I see your beautiful hairline. It's fake. Really? <laughs> yeah. Are you serious? I'm serious. I'm dead serious. It's a fucking tattoo. And, and that's rude for you to say you're young you're, you're young compared to me. I'm sorry. You're, aren't you a couple of years older than me? Yeah, I'm 45. Seriously? Seriously. I'm born in 1978. My my okay, so you're four years old then, brother. Yeah. My sister is some nineteen seventy nine. She has three years on me. My older sister. How she look? She's married. Be quiet, bro. Okay. On that stuff. Okay. No, no family shit. I'm just asking. Why? Why the, you? Ha- why you have to? Why you got to be so? Hostile? Why you have? To, because the, bro, bro the, I shouldn't. I, I, I should never even brought her. I should never even brought it up. Let's switch it up. Okay. All Talk right. about something else. All right. I'm. I'm glad to see you. I, I, I'm very happy to see yeah, you. Obviously, that I was like, "Come on, you yeah, gotta get me out of there." You're getting very, you're getting hostile with me when I'm the same guy. I'm always joking around like this, and you know this. I know, but I know. All right, I we we won't talk about family. I I would never, I would never try to date your sister. I'm just asking how she look. You know, I won't do that. I'm not that type of guy because I wouldn't want you dating my no, sister. I, know. I wouldn't want you dating my sister. Why? Because she probably smothered you. She fat as fuck. <laughs> Then you be crying to me, like telling me about. Uh, my, bro, my... hey, let me, can I ask you something? Yeah. Seriously, um, the other day we were watching Best Knockouts, and when you knocked out Vandalay with that left hook. Yeah. Man, everybody was like, it happens in second, it happened third. I'm like, it's in the first round, right? In UFC, yeah, first round, yeah. First round? Yeah. First round, you torqued. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I did the cover and roll. Man. How did you feel going in the cage with him at that time? Because back then, everybody was on juice. Everybody was on juice. All of a sudden, they come to the UFC, they get their ass kicked from nobodies. Yeah. Right? My <laughs> first offer was from Pride, not the UFC. Mm-hmm. They want me to fight ta- Gomi. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They were, but I was like, nah, UFC is here. It's in Vegas. I like Vegas, so I'm just going to go fight here. The UFC was probably paying more, too, wasn't they? Uh, I don't know. You don't know. I don't know what they... Uh, they, they they offered me go me there and even send everything. I already said no. I'm fighting UFC. I had, I had already got the contract and stuff because UFC was there. My dad. I'm like I'm not gonna go, dude. They just come and give you a box of money. Yeah. I'm What's like, wrong with that? Uh, I, oh, oh. What's wrong with that? And I gotta. There's nothing wrong with it. I just gotta give it to 20 people to put it in their pocket so we can go through customs. Yeah, I, it's I, hard. You talk, I was fighting over. You could have talked to me, asked me how you get around that. I could have taught you how to get around that. I, I I know how to get around that. You can't do it now though. No, because now the technology is better. They looking right through you, through everything. Yeah, I I bro, I had stacks here, here, yeah. here, here. I but you fought out there once though, didn't you? Yeah, I fought in I fought in Brazil. Japan, I did judo in Japan. Mm-hmm. Not, Britain, not I didn't even fight in Japan. But was it professional? They paid you. No, they didn't know. I was part of the team. And oh. I was part of U.S. I was part of their top team. I was in the Olympic trials, and then UFC came knocking. Mm-hmm. Um, dude, that's when I had to make the decision. I had Olympic trials mm-hmm. that I can go. Uh, the number one guy I had beaten and lost to him before. The mm-hmm. top five guys, mm-hmm. they compete for the trials two days every day mm-hmm. until whoever has the most wins gets to go to the Olympics. Mm. It it was either that or go to the UFC. I'm like, you know what, man? Judo is my sport. I love it to the core. It's made me who I am as an athlete and sometimes as a person because we had to we were soldiers, bro. Eight years old, start training. Ten years old, get up and start running the mountain four miles. 
10 years old, 10. And my pops would get me up, 10 years old. Is that I, when you started, judo at 10? Eight. eight. And then first, my dad didn't even know if, what, who took me to practice, who brought me. He didn't know anything because he was working seven days a week. I came to the States in 88. You wasn't born here? No. But I remember Armenia. I remember Russia. And obviously, I went to school here. Mm. I, I came when I was five. How many languages do you speak? Armenian, English, obviously. Uh, I can read and write Armenian, which is a very big deal. Because people, they came here before it was still Soviet Union, Armenia. Mm. Yeah. Not too many... There are people that try to, they still read and write. I can still read and I never, I just did Armenian, like as far as somebody teaching me Armenian letters. Yeah. In this country, one year they were giving some lady, she would come in and teach us one hour of Armenian. And that's how I know how to read Armenian. That's it. Mm. You was the first Armenian fighter in the UFC though, weren't you? Yeah, first Armenian fighter. Are there, are there some Armenian fighters there now? Yeah, the, uh, this new kid, man, I keep on forgetting his name. Um, Did we have him on here? It's, it's uh, Artem. Ar Artem. Artem? Yeah. Is he from Armenia? Yeah. Yes. Or he's American Armenia. Huh? Uh, Are no. you a fan of his? Of course. But you don't even know his name. Well, man, I saw him fight this, uh, was it the champ he fought? I, I think he fought the champ. He was a last minute guy. He fought the champ. Oh yeah. They, they, they and I recently. saw the kid fight and I got so mad. I can see the kid, he's just fighting to get through the fight. That's it. Cause they give him a two week, two week notice. Yeah. He wasn't throwing to hit and damage and let me try to finish. No, he was just one of those fights. Let me just not get knocked out and stuff. Give me a longer time. I don't know, bro. So even even though you was in the UFC before it got really popular and stuff like that, it was still it was still big back then. But it's not as popular as it is now since Conor McGregor he changed the whole the whole sport. Do yeah, you do you feel like um you have you still have a lot of fans in Armenia and stuff? Because you... I got fans everywhere. I know, but I'm saying about Armenia. Armenia. Well, I'm sure that I have fans. Have you been back? No. Why not? I was going 2009. Yeah, going like with a like a whole big bang. I was gonna go. Yeah. And then, let's just put it aside. Nothing went through. Mm -mm. I don't know. It's a long story. Yeah. What, anyway. What, but um. But what you were talking about, what did McGregor did, talking about what you just said, when you say Conor McGregor, his image is so much bigger than what him as a fighter. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? They have made the image so much bigger that when the fight comes, it, 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 it's about the fight, right. not how much big they can. Oh, okay, okay. At the end of the day, they're going to fight. Dude, I got in UFC when there was no fucking ultimate fighter shows and stuff. We all got in the UFC by actually beating world champions. Dana was like, I knew your name when you were 17. At 21 is when they were like, they brought me in to be a stepping stone, apparently. Yeah, it was a different. It was a different game back then. Like, exactly. Yeah, but but I'm glad to see you know the sport I love you know, you know take off. It's so it's real popular now. I'm glad to see that. Of course. I mean, we were part of it, man. Yeah. I mean, that's what they tell. I'm I'm sorry. I'm going by what what I hear. Yeah, it, it's true. We we all are part of. We all paved the way for other people. Absolutely. And you the first, you know, judo pra practitioner. First our main kid. First, first judo. judo. And then Ronda Rousey came after you. She was yeah. the other, she was the other she one. She trained with us, well, dude. That's right. Huh? Let me tell you something. Let me tell everybody this. You know why Ronda was so good? Because. Guys would not come and train with highest stand guys because we had a bad reputation of, about hurting people, which was BS. We heard nobody, bro. This little white girl blonde was coming in training. She would, I would throw her. She would cry. And then she would, I would say something funny. She would suck a lip, lip back up. And I was like, I got, I got you to laugh. Let's go. She would get mad if I threw her. That's how tough she was. She trained with all these crazy ass Armenian kids. That's why she went to the worlds and became a world judo champion. That's an accomplishment.
Wow, that's right. She did train with on, on the judo and with of Gina course. With you guys. Well, no, it, well, no. She trained with her mother, but she also came and, and trained with us. She practiced course. Or something. How, how often did she come and train with you guys? Um, it was like on a weekly basis. Like to, uh, I left Gokor in two thousand five. You want to talk about that? No, nah, I mean, there's nothing to talk about. It was just it's just something that happened. No, but I, I, I right now. I mean, talk about now. Yeah. I got something going on. I mean, I'm. I mean, right now, I'm just. I. I got. I'm expecting my first child ever. Congratulations. Thank you, man. You have no idea. Are you I, married now? Yes. Yes. My father passed away at 2016, and when he passed, I was completely messed up, and then I I couldn't have a child with my wife and all that stuff, and then you know. After prayers and you know, everything we do, man, you know, and we did that, all that crap, and finally, thank God, my wife's five months pregnant, and um, you know, I got, I opened up a gym right around the corner in Glendale. What's the name of your gym? Uh, well, Heat MMA. Oh. It's in eight one eight North Pacific. I want to come up there one day and check it out. You got to, once I do like a grand opening, yeah. you, you have to be there. Bro. Yeah. Let me know when you. When, just so let me cut that. Come have some food. Also, it's, you, you haven't had the grand opening or nothing yet. You just no, started doing I, it. The gym is ready. It's perfect. It's everything is, it's like, a, there's a bow on it. Give me a week notice. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, all right. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see your gym. You're going to start training like. Uh, I'm MMA. starting to, I'm, I'm going to teach him no gi judo. No gi judo, man. I'm going to, I want to make it out. These people. Dude, you have no idea how many guys are like Frank Mir. I have a judo for MMA book in Barnes and Noble. Mm-hmm. You you have your book in Barnes and Noble? Yeah, what's well, that, I had it. What's, it's not. It's not. It, it was on for years, well, and then is it on um, Amazon now? Yeah. What's the name of your book? Carl Parisian Judo for MMA, and the guy on the cover, his name is Neil Melanson. He teaches everybody. He everybody's grappling coach, and Randy, he's that's my friend. Did did um, Ronda Rousey train with him as well? With no, 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 that book. Um, there was a girl that used to take pictures all the time in the UFC, and she was like, Hey, do I saw your book at uh Uriah's uh, room? Uriah Faber, yeah. And I was like, What are you doing with that book? And Uriah was like, That book's the shit. What do you know? You know, and then Frank Mir, too, because he was fighting uh Brock Lesnar. Mm. And he wanted to, because that, that, you know, I have my lock. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing I always like, the Kimura lock. Yeah. And they want to, you know, off, right off that. They always learning that he he hurt himself. And then he's blaming me, Frank. Me and Frank like, yeah. I'm going to tell you something about Frank. I've been hanging out with him a lot lately. Yeah. I had no idea the type of mind he has for martial arts. You know, he's really good at jiu-jitsu. You know that. Yeah, he's a good, but of course. He, the, but his mind for martial arts, like he can break things down and understand it really well. I think he, he's like, he's like, a, he's like a- uh, Encyclopedia? Bro, bro, he can break he can break it down. Like I, I just look at him as a jiu-jitsu guy, but he was breaking down how he jabs and how he sets up um, punches. I was like, man, I wish I would have known that back in the day. I could really use that. He's very knowledgeable and- and striking and martial arts. It's like he studies it. So I can tell that he probably read your book. He probably did read your book. If you if he learned that move from you, yeah. Uh Frank probably I'll did. I'll never because he was at Spearmint Rhino. He was the door dude. Yeah, I remember that. That's where I met him at. That's where I know. And me, Jay Haran, that's my boy. Yeah, Jay Haran. He's yeah. my boy. Yeah, he's, yeah. I, you know, he's my boy. I love him. Quit love. Shout out to yeah, Jay yeah, Hieronymus. Yeah, we gotta get him on the show. Yeah, show man. I, I haven't seen him in a minute, bro. But me and Jay, <laughs> we're like, yo, whoa, whoa. He would do this. <laughs> what that mean? Hey, Rhino, Rhino. Oh, yeah, Rhino. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we would take I'm gonna up. steal your ice because you're not using it. Yeah, you can do it. You, you like the energy drink? Yeah, I'm, I'm sipping on it, bro. But do you like the way it tastes? Yeah, it's, it's very good. That's it's real. That's my energy drink. This is yours, bro? Yeah, F3 Energy. It's me and a guy named Harrison uh, Rogers. He, Chasing, wow. Yeah, he, he, he designed an energy drink that make it really healthy. Why does every energy drink have that? The aftertaste? Yeah, that you can tell it's not real sugar. Oh, this one's not, this, this one don't use real sugar. That's why. We use healthy sugar. There's no healthy sugar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, then, no, real sugar is a Brown sugar is better than brown sugar 
it's better than white, white sugar. sugar. Hey, y'all heard it here first. Absolutely. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah. Brown sugar is better than white sugar. So you think we should- Don't get it twisted. You think we should use brown sugar in the Instead, place of- in Yes. Place of, white sugar is really addictive. We all addicted to that shit. Yeah. Because they make everything with white sugar. It's easy. At least- when I drink Coca-Cola, I get the ones made in Mexico. Mexico, uh, yeah. Because that's real sugar cane, yeah, brother. Cane sugar, yeah. yeah I, can tell, I can tell all that stuff. I can tell you a lot of shit, bro. I'm, I'm, I, not I'm, just I'm, MMA. You I know, know. I, I know. can tell I'm, you so much stuff I'm about animals. it will blow your brains out. What do you yeah. want to tell me? No, nothing. I'm just, Why? I want to hear. I have, bro, I haven't talked to you in years. Yeah, years. I know. Yeah, but what... What were you ever interested in talking to me about? I'll never forget you asked me something in Armenian on that yeah, yeah. podcast we did. You that remember you taught me some words in Armenian, but I can't remember this stuff now. It was just good morning. How do you say that again? I forgot. Body Louis in Chpeses, and you're like, you said it, and I said, that's it. That's yeah, we it. did something. It yeah. was a clip, boom. Do you know how many hits that clip got? I forgot how to say. How do you say thank you in Ar Armenian? Merci. Oh, it sounds like French. Not Shonora Kalution. I mean, that's the long, that's like, oh, thank you very much. Yeah. That's more like that now. Just just say, not merci, because that's, that's French. French. Re, merci. Merci. Re, re, re. Re, re. There you go. Merci. How, how do you say, do you like black dudes in Armenia? <laughs> Shut the hell what? up. What's wrong with that? I like Armenian chicks. Say hi. In Armenian, you want me to tell you how do you like black dudes? Yeah. I, I want to ask a girl, how do you, I want to ask a girl, do you like black dudes? <laughs> Do you like black men? What's wrong with that? Armenian <laughs> girls are hot. I know. <laughs> you married what? already. I'm single. So, you and know. And man, ever since I know you've been single, bro. Yeah. But you always paint child and support and child <laughs> alimony. <laughs> Where are those people? <laughs> Damn, bro. Hey. You got a you got an Asian wife. You got a black wife. You got a white wife. No. You got everything. You got all the Skittles and everything. <laughs> 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 bro, you got everything. I've heard of you. Crazy, bro. What's what's wrong with my lifestyle? Man, nothing is on. You just pay a lot out. You just you just pay a lot. No, I've never been on child support. You haven't paid anything for your kids. No, I take care of them. I don't have to be on child support. How about the moms? Well, uh, some of them taken care of. <laughs> for real, because my two older. Listen, you haven't changed. Me, man. No, I, I want. You're I want the same them, dude, I want bro. them change. My two older. My two older ones. I raised them myself, so their moms don't get nothing. And then I got married once to a Japanese woman. And that bitch, I mean, that woman been living off me for 18 years. And I take care of my kids. And she's from... Ja oh, she's straight man, from Japan. From Japan. Japanese women are oh, not bad. They just stick to you very easily. She got Americanized. She changed, bro. Well, she changed. That's why she did what she did, yeah. obviously. She would never done that when she was in Japan. Right. Exactly. So yeah, I'm, I'm just telling you that... It's very, very, they're very docile women, dude. Yeah, very submissive. Over there, when I was doing judo and then the fight and all that, they're very, ah, ah, ah. They fall in love with you like this. Yeah, on first date. She fell like in love this. With me. On, she, she fell in love with me on the first date. But you know what, though? This is, this is the crazy thing, though. I'd never been in love before, but I knew that I knew that she was the girl I wanted. I knew I was going to marry her after the first date. That Japanese girl? Yep, I knew it. Did you understand what she said? She spoke English. Really? She had yeah. no accent? No, she didn't even have an accent. She learned her English in Australia. Oh. She worked at the airport. Ah. Uh, we, hey, we had a first date. It was one of the best first dates I've been on. It took me six months. It took me six months to get her to even go on a date with me. Damn. Man. She was beautiful, bro. You're, you're tough, she was, though. Dude. She was beautiful. And then we went on the first, we went on a date. You know, I had the date went well. We went to Outback Steakhouse in Japan. I was crazy. Hey, bro, I was crazy about this. After after the first date, I was like, oh, this is the woman I want. And then and when I married her, I didn't even look at another woman. I didn't even look at you another woman. You were that loyal? Woman. Yeah. Really? When I'm married, I'm married. But when I'm not, I'm not. You know what I'm saying? You still joke around when you're married about the chicks? No, I didn't even do shit. I didn't even go out clubbing and shit. I'm, you don't have to go clubbing. No, I didn't do if shit. If you're married to your girl, you got to have a... If I tell my wife, I'm going to go to a club, babe, with the guys, maybe have a drink, come back. She'll laugh at me. Go ahead, because she knows I don't drink. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, maybe she won't see shit, because, the, I mean, you got to have some kind of a trust. 
Yeah, yeah. And she trust she trusted me, but when she was my girlfriend, we was in a long distance relationship, right? She lived in Japan, and I lived here. And and I, plus, I cheated. Bro, I cheated on her. There's a lot of difference, culture difference. I know, no, everything. But different. everybody here, I cheated, we're listen, Americans. I cheated on her when she was my girlfriend, and and she asked me, and I told her, like, yeah, I, I figured you was doing the same thing because. We, you know, I only saw her when I went to Japan to fight, and she would yeah. come. Yeah, how do I know you're not doing it exactly. here? But she she moved to America. She dropped everything and moved to America to help me raise my oldest son. And I was like, oh, okay. So okay. since she did that, I wanted to I wanted to be loyal to her and, and other ways. Like, man, we don't show our, our loyalty the same way women do, but I wanted to go above and beyond. So what I did was when she moved to America, we got married. I just pretended like she was the only woman on the planet. I didn't even look at other women because... I'm the type of guy that I don't have discipline. I, if I'm on a diet, I ain't finna be looking at no cake. Yeah. You know, she was the only one. She was the only woman I wanted. I figured no girl has ever treated me that well. I'm like, man, I'm not fucking around. I'm not fucking this. I'm not gonna ever really? meet a girl like this. She, she treated was. me really well. So first. she had her Japanese tradition yeah. still. Yeah. But she spoke with Aussie accent. No, no. By the time I met her, she lost her Aussie accent. So you couldn't hear it. So she was speaking it's pure Japanese, English. Pure English. But she had like a certain little Japanese twang to it. Okay. And she understand English perfect. You married her. I married her. I got her pregnant and I married her. She, we got married while she was pregnant. Your family was it, was it a big wedding? Did your family come? No, no, no. We we did. We she didn't want. She's weird. She didn't want a big wedding. Did her family come? No, her family disowned her for two years for marrying me. Yeah, that's why I was trying to fish. Yeah, yeah. Her her dad like disowned her, but he he accepted her when he found out that his kids. His grandkids spoke Japanese. He thought that she was going to move here because they're, they're descendants of samurai. You know, say so very, of course, very understand. respectful and stuff. I, like that. I, yeah. I understand completely, but yeah. come on, dude. I mean, it's about two human beings, man. It has nothing. First of all, you fucking idiots. Black isn't a race. It's the color of your skin. Right. Okay. It's the color of your skin. There's French black. There's Dominican black. There's Puerto Rican, black, there's black everywhere. Even in Armenia, there's black. There's black people in Armenia? Yes, and he speaks and he, yeah, because an Armenian lady went to Africa. She uh, adopted two kids, a boy and a girl, brought them to Armenia. Oh my God! Are they called Armenian? They sing in they sing in Armenian. They speak Armenian and everything. Everything, just like you would be brought up. Bro. Are they called like Arnidigans? No, they just called Armenians. You know what? The, IAN stands for and YAN. No. Okay. When it, when anytime you anytime you see somebody's last name ends with an IAN or a YAN, most likely they're from Armenian heritage. Mm. That the Yan means son of. That's why every last name says Yan. IAN or YAN. YAN is more of Russian Armenians. Like I'm Russian Armenian. If I had to put it like from Armenia, mm. because there's Persian Armenians, there's Lebanese Armenians. You understand what that is? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I'm still learning about all that, you know, because, you know, America, we kind of like. Man, you're from Memphis, right? I'm from Memphis, baby. Memphis, Memphis Tennessee. man. You been there? Yes, of course. Man, it's different. People think they, they see America when, I'm like, dude, you're in, you're in L.A., bro. Like, you don't even know. You got to get out. Go see America. Mississippi down all the way. Dude, people don't understand, man. I was brought up here, bro. And judo took me to every state, Rampage. Every weekend, brother. Idaho, Uaho, every <laughs> fucking state we went to. A few times. I love Miami, though. You like Miami? Yeah. What you like about Miami? Miami, they stay up late. Oh, boy. You like those, yeah, before you was married, you like the big, big booty Latino <laughs> bitches. <laughs> I know it. Dude, they got that white face, but that curvy yeah. Cuban. I'm like, oh, oh my, my God. gosh. Yeah. yeah. If, I lived, if I lived in Miami, bro, I, I tell my you, girl, I had me a big booty Latina. I ain't going to lie. I'm not even going to lie. Everybody think like, oh, Rampage loves Asians. No. I'm, I'm, in, I'm not here in California. I like all girls, but I'm not here in California. But he's a brother. I'm a brother. Deep down the core, we like the booty. Come on now. <laughs> Hell Man. yeah. Damn, Damn right. bro. It's been a minute, bro. It's been a minute, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Rampage. So, 
So what, I, I want to hear about this gym. You're going to train people. You're going to try. Yeah, to, I'm going to be teaching, brother. And you're going to get them to go to MMA, USC fight. I'm starting. Uh, the gym is open. I'm teaching from self defense to everybody's got their motive. I want to come. My New Year's resolution. I want to get in shape. Great. Come train, get in shape. Some people come, I want to train, I might want to make a pro. Fine. Take the class, just like anybody else. I'm there, I'm teaching Rampage. You see, I can open up a gym, put my name on it, and still, uh, whoever is teaching under my name, they're still going to get people. Mm. This is me, they're teaching me. Nobody else is teaching for me. So when people actually know and come and sign up, they can go on Instagram, they can carlprison.com, anywhere. They can come, see me, sign up, and I'm the one teaching the classes, boss. How many classes are you going to have a, a day? Depends on how many people sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? <laughs> Ain't that the truth? I mean, you know, like I said, the first 50 to sign up, they get a special, special, like every day that the gym is open, you're more than welcome to come, take the class and et cetera. The first 50, you know, it's one small bundle. They can go and check it out. But like I said, I'm going to be teaching, man. Nobody else. Well, where's the cross streets? What's the address of this gym? 818 North Pacific in a shopping center. Oh, you in a shopping center. That's a good, that's a yeah. good location. It's in a shopping center. In Glendale? Yeah. Why you, why you make the face like that? <laughs> no, 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 no. Why you make that face when no, I say man, Glendale? I just don't like living in Glendale. Why? It's, it's a like nice place. I've been there once or twice. It's a very nice place. I don't like living there. What, what, would, you, what would be your ideal place to I live? I was living in my ideal place. It was Northridge. It was like near Granada Hills. I had, and I, I had everything great. I had it all settled out. Was your wife like Glendale? No, no. Her, she lived there. And parents did it, but no, it had nothing to do with that. No. I thought you always lived in Glendale. I always thought that. What's wrong with you? No, I don't know. man, I was in Hollywood, Hollywood, and then Hollywood, and then I went to Las Feliz, which is still Hollywood, but it's completely different. Off one street, mm. imagine two hundred thousand house. That's what it costs. One street above, it goes six hundred thousand and above. That's what I'm telling you. Mm. But Hollywood, and then I went to the Valley, Northridge, like, you know, up. Yeah, I don't know much about California, especially uh, L.A. Don't, you live in, where do you live? I, well, Costa the Mesa? Uh, right now, Westminster. Westminster. Yeah, but you know, I've been. I've You've been, been in Cali for a minute, though. Yeah, about, two, about 22 years, but I still like, I'm still a Memphis boy. So I, I know, so I know, I boss. Just, but, but basically, when you come out here, you're settled out. Yeah, I wish I wish I would have moved to LA first though. Cause I, I I feel like I don't fit in in Orange County sometimes. Of course, bro. From Mem Memphis, what where about Memphis? From South Memphis. South Fun Memphis. Funky Town. Funky Town. Damn, though. Yeah. Yeah. I, I grew up right down the street from Elvis Presley um, house. No way, bro. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> I grew up close to that. See, man. See, if you have how many brothers? Three brothers. I got two brothers and two sisters. You met you met my younger brother Derek. I don't know I've you, I've met your other brother too. Oh, you met Dale? Yes, I uh, met Dale too. Uh. Dale was like, and we started, you know, we started rapping and shit. Took me number. He called. I called him. Like, okay, dog, I got your number. Yeah. Straight up, bro. We we're all class X. All your brother. Yeah. <laughs> Derek was a little loopy, but yeah, yeah, Derek then crazy. We've, we were always laughing with Derek, yeah. man. Yeah, <laughs> Derek crazy. He, he, he's a riot. We, we just talk shit. Yeah. Derek is one of my biggest haters, though. <laughs> Your own brother. My own brother, bro. Why? I just the way, just way we are. It just, I always, I don't never hate on him, but he, he'll hate on me, and I just laugh. It's funny. It's just weird, it, bro. It's a good way to look at it, absolutely. But yeah. why would you hate on your own biological brother? Bro, I don't, it's why like competition. You, hate, you don't take care of him, maybe? I don't, I, I, I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you. I'm be 100% honest with you. I don't do shit for that nigga. You want to know why? Why? When I first moved here, I left everything. I left my car. I left my job. I left my apartment. Left my family. And I just, I drove here with this girl that I was used to date in college and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And it took me like six or eight months to get a job. 
And you remember you remember that guy, you remember that guy um used to train with us, Dave Roberts. You remember? Of course. He the one who started me training and stuff and everything, right? Yeah. And he he was married to this beautiful woman and and they let me sleep on, on their floor. I mean, my girlfriend, they set me up, let me sleep yeah. on their floor in their apartment. Then they moved out. She got another apartment. And they let me keep that apartment, and but I had to pay the rent, and the rent was nine hundred dollars a month on that one apartment, and I Damn. and I couldn't afford it. I was broke as fuck, and my brother he had came and, and to some money. He he came with like ten grand, like he had a lump sum. Oh. He did something and he got some money, right? So I asked my okay. brother. I said, "This is." I said, "Bro, you know, let me let me borrow some money, man. If I if I make it out here in California with this fighting shit." I know I'm going to make it, but if I make it, you let me borrow some money. Whatever you ask me for is yours. I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna take care of you. Wow. And he was like, "No, I can't do it for you." I said, "Oh my god!" He said, "Everybody hit me up for money." I said, "Yeah, I understand that, bro." But that's I said, everybody. I'm your brother. I'm, I said, I'm, I'm your, your brother. I'm, Screw everybody else. Yeah, I said, I'm your brother. I said, "Listen, anything." I'm like, I say, just anything. I ain't got food to eat. I need some. I didn't have food to eat, bro. I know. I believe you. I, I believe you. I was, I was, you. Busted. I was asked. I said, "Bro, any, send me anything." He 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 said no, I I can't help you. I said all right. I said I just can't. remember. I said but I'm a rem I'm a remember this. Uh, when I make it, you better not ask me for a goddamn thing because I ain't doing shit for you. And sure enough, I don't do shit for him. But 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 now you know, say if he needs some money, or something like that, he'll sell me. Like he like to flip cars. Well, now he'll it makes sense when yeah. you say he's hating on you. He hating me a little bit, but he'll sell me a car. I do something like that. I buy a car from him. And it'd be like more than what the car works, just a little bit. But I get the car or something like that. So, you know what I'm saying? He he do do something like that. But I won't. I won't. If he need to borrow money, don't ask me. I don't. Man, do shit for him. if I dude, it's so messed up, man. Yeah, it's just it's, it's just the way my family is like that. That, but that, I never forget that. I, you, I can't. I cannot blame Derek. I can't blame anybody for doing such a thing. You, nobody can blame somebody else because you don't think like me. I completely understand that, but there's laws in life, and those laws bring family. If there is a family, biological brother has nothing to eat, you come up on ten G's. You don't want to drop a couple to your brother at least. Right. That's at least he could have sent me a hundred dollars. He could have sent me fifty dollars. He could have done something. something. He could have come and said, "Let me come and help you and feed you." At least, at least, you know, because even if you if if he had done that, he would never even bring this stuff up. But he did nothing, nothing, and, I, and cockroach special, <laughs> Cock, the cockroach special. Okay. Hey, he's always been that way though. He's he's always been a hustler. He always come up on money, but he's like re he's always been like a stingy person. Yeah, but yeah, but I understand. but but um, the thing is that um, he's I my brother. I still love him no matter what. Though, of but, course, of course. But I never I never forgot that, and I stay true to my word. And like he he's had times where he wasn't doing he wasn't doing good. Yeah, and, and yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, man. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just like you. I was hungry. I had nowhere to go. I had nowhere to sleep, and you had. I'm supposed to think about it and be like, yes, I'm, I'm, I, there's supposed to be absolutely no zero in thought of my mind. Oh, my brother won't help me out. Mm -hmm. None of that crap. But that made me stronger though, bro. Look, absolutely, but, bro. But he, you're a self-made millionaire and I'm telling you, you're the man, Grand Page. I saw you fighting, bro, from King of the Cage and you were funny and you were knocking fools out. Yeah. And then we trained and you just, you, your image just started coming together. And yeah. then you became your image. You know, it's, it's basically you're selling a brand. You're a brand, and your brand came together, brother. Thank you, brother. Woo! It was it was me and you after you when you fought Chuck and I fought Berkman. That show, yeah, we were the main events. Both of our after party was at the same place, fool. It was <laughs> Club Pure. Yeah, David Arquette's there. On my shit, they had a whole King share for. Or else, so I was like, I can't believe this crap, dude. And I'm getting like thousands of bucks just to party. Yeah, that was the that life. Was a, oh, that my was, gosh. Like, and did then, you go to the pool party the next yeah, day? Yeah, Liddell came in. was like, <laughs> my, my foot was like this, bro. You're I was slow. like, yo, dog, guys, I can't, man. I didn't even fucking fly. I, I had homeboys days. We just drove back home. Liddell came and knocked on your door the next day? Yeah, because I, I, I'm, I, I'm buddies with him, too. And he's like... Um, I'm gonna knock on your door tomorrow morning. I'm like, yeah, okay. And then he did knock. It was 
Was it the rehab party? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Damn, dog. That was a crazy party. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. I, miss, I miss those old days when I was young. Yeah, man. I remember those. Yeah. I remember walking around me, Tito, and Jenna, Tiki. We were all walking around at the Hollywood uh, Hard Rock, whatever it was, dude. Just, Did you know that Tiki became one of, the, uh, one of the best managers in MMA? What do you mean? Tiki's a man. He's my manager. Tiki's got, well, I know he was with you, Tiki. But he's like, managing fighters now. Tiki's got me the best deal out of all my managers put together in MMA. Tiki's a good manager. Never knew that guy was going to turn out to be a manager. Well, bro, Tiki, I've known Tiki since back from then. Like I told you, like when we come train, like I've been in this house, like, you know, and I remember, yeah, man, Tiki, I like Tiki, man. We used to, we used to and hang out yeah. back in the days. Yeah. Hey, uh, since I'm bringing up Tiki Managing, you know Mazadal got that um, Bare Knuckle MMA show. Yeah. It's on Fight it's on fight Pass. They paying good money. You, you ever thought about giving them one good one one more last run? Yeah, back in dude, I don't have any mileage on me, bro. I mean, uh, you know I'm beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you, should, you, should, you should think about getting back in there and do the uh, Bare Knuckle MMA. Yeah, if I get into it. But didn't Phil fight that with no, nah, that was bare knuckle boxing. This is bare knuckle MMA, like oh, old school, like like UFC. Then, like the, okay, okay, Who, who's who's throwing that? Um, uh, Jorge Masvidal. Masvidal, that's his show. That's his show. It's on UFC fight. It's blowing, bro. They paying people millions of dollars, ain't they? Are they are the purses like millions of dollars? Mm -hmm. yeah. Big names be fighting on I that think shit. Rockhold's yeah, getting yeah. offered a million right now. Is there For a Walter Reed class? Yeah. Who's your Who's your manager right now? Who is there a Walter Reed class? Yeah, it's our weight class. Oh. You should think about that. I will think about it. I have a son coming. I told you I got a son coming on. Yeah, the man. Thank God. And uh, so. If you go, I want to corner you for your first one. I'll be one of your corner men. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Be like old days. Yeah, man. Kick their ass and like, yo, we're still here, man. Yeah, but I ain't training with you, though. Fuck that. I ain't letting no. you flip me around. I'm too old for that <laughs> shit. Yeah. Dude, stop. I'm not talking about that. You, you help me with the hands. Hold some mitts for me, you know. Carl, tweak these, tweak that. You know, I'm talking about something like that. I'm not talking about let's get going. No, yeah, you go now. Like, no, I got people for there, that. And they start there. The next thing you know, you gonna be flipping me around like like yeah. old days. Fuck that. No, no, no. I got a 23 year old son that fights. I saw the picture. I'm like, I can't believe it. Rampage got a son that fights. Yeah. So, dude, look. I bring him. You can flip him. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> you can flip his ass. <laughs> you ain't flipping me. <laughs> Oh, dude. No, uh, well, anytime, bro. Car Parisian Airlines. <laughs> Smooth takeoff, hard landing. Bro, I would fucking, I would, I would fucking buy a pay per view if he's in there fighting. Uh, I give frequent foul miles to everybody, baby. <laughs> Car Parisian Airlines. I smooth takeoff, hard landing. <laughs> <laughs> who's your Who's your manager? You want me to talk to Tiki and have him talk to Mustard? You know or? who my manager is? Who you staring at him? God damn. <laughs> That's always the worst manager. I be, I got the most. I got the best money for me. What's his name? Pavia. Oh yeah, Kenny Pavia. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys, I got you. I'm like, oh, you got me that much. Guess how much I got from, from Sprawl? Oh, this much. He goes, why don't you come work for me, bro? <laughs> Dumbass. Hey, I'm gonna tell you something about Kenny Pavia. I love Kenny Pavia. Not He's, Kenny. Yeah, Ken Pavia. Yeah, Ken Pavia. Ken Pavia. I, I love Kenny Pavia. Ken Pavia. Yeah. But the one reason why I never worked with him is because. He always told me how much money he made people. Oh, and he's going to be saying the yeah, same shit. And I, no, I he no. took me out to sushi three nights in a row just to sign with him. I yeah. said, no, bro. Bro, in MMA, no, no, no one ever knew... <laughs> No one ever knew how much money I, I made in MMA. I always... I, I never talked about it. Bro, you know what? Bringing that up, that's a very serious thing. People will tell me, how much money did you make for that? I'm like, how yeah. much money did you make last week for your paycheck, fucker? Yeah. Tell me how much money you make every fucking week. What do you do? You're a mechanic. You're a waiter. How much money do you make? People always ask you. It's so fucked up. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, oh, fighting this guy, this is how much money I made. Yay. Fucking idiots. That's my livelihood. Yeah. That's what I do. I pass my bread. I'm not going to tell you how much money I make for a fight. <laughs> you can see the first check, second check. Yeah, my left nut. You yeah. can't see that, yeah. and the bonuses. See, that's why I like fighting in pride. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't disclose any of that. But in the uh, UFC, the commission check. I was, so, but they were insane. They just pick a box up and 
What? Yeah. You know, why are this shit? You nuts? <laughs> I'm not gonna carry this shit around. It's all money. Yeah. They don't care. Dude, I used to fucking. It was the the hundred dollar bills brand new. I know. It I used to stuck know. together. Stuck together. And we have yeah. to do. That. <laughs> and used to get. I used to pay people like two or three hundred dollars. Yeah. For something is fifty dollars, you know. Yeah, you know but it was messed up. It's so messed it's, up. It's mob run. Brand new yeah, money. It was, run it. Bro, it was warm. Really? Yeah. It was warm when you got it. They would just. They would just give it to you in the room. Dude, they would. It, yeah. it was like in a box. They would just come and say, "Why?" Oh, they were like, "Hey, bro, this I, your money." Did you ever get nervous when Pride would just give you cash? Just leave it in your room? No, I never fought for Pride. I know people that fought for Pride. I was with them. Oh, got it. Yeah. And uh, hey, the <laughs> first time, them. the first time they paid me. I sat there and I was going to count it. And they looked at me like, what, you don't trust me? I was like, yeah, okay, I trust you. But I got paid so much in cash. Uh, after maybe like a year or so, I can tell by touching the the Yeah, how much stacks. money it is, yeah. Yeah, I can I tell. I swear to God. I can tell. I if swear it, to God. If it, if it was short or not. I can tell just by touching the $1,000 stack. Like, yeah, oh, no, nah, you, like, you off like 200 You off 500 You can tell. Because it's weird. The same amount. Imagine getting... Getting cash, 50000 always the same. It's always the same, same, same. Yeah. If you, if they give you four, or 5200 you'll feel. Yeah, you feel yourself. I swear. It made, it made it spending a lot easy, huh? Like you were spending the money oh a lot God. easier because oh it's just sitting in your not pocket. Not just because, just because just you, when you feel that kind of cash, like. Bro, I'm going to tell you, I was in my 20s making stacks of cash and bro, my family was poor, so I was helping them out. That's the main reason why I fought, right? That's it. I had to, I had to start hiding money from myself because my memory is so bad, right? So I would hide money from myself in my room, and then <laughs> months later, I cleaned up my room. I'm like, oh fuck, I found like, <laughs> found like twenty thousand dollars. Okay, are you serious? Yeah, I had to hide money from myself. I didn't, I, I didn't want, I didn't want, I didn't trust to give it to nobody. Damn, I used to hide money from myself. So. As we wrap up, I appreciate you coming on the pod. You're very exciting and you're Thank awesome you for to, having me, to, to listen to. And you're a part of the history and, and the legacy of MMA and UFC. Your fights were phenomenal. Your corners were phenomenal. Who, who's one of your favorite fighters of all time? Fighters. I had to go with Fedor as far as a fighter. And one point, Frank Shamrock was one of the best fighters too. For when I, at one point, it was Frank Shamrock, much younger I was. I remember at one point he was my favorite fighter at one minute. And then it was Fedor. Fedor's mine as well. Fedor yeah, was, yeah. Uh, he was, he was fighting like he was a judoka. Same but exact Sam Sambo, face and balance. Sambo is judo, that's the same thing? It's like Russian judo? Sambo is judo top, wrestling bottom. Oh, uh, that's why they That's why they don't wear the pants. Yeah, they wear the, just the, the gi and, in the top. And, and the belt goes through the gi. Mm. Not like judo, we just wrap around mm. and then we're ready to go. They have to, and then they can do leg locks and stuff. What's there better, is, judo or sambo? What's more efficient? Two different sports. Two completely. different sports. You know, one has, Say you get a gold medal at sambo, gold medal at judo. Oh, nine, nine out of ten times. Who judo, 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 mm. my friend. No. <laughs> Are you biased? Because no, I'm not biased at all. I just know what a judo world champion can fucking do. I, I, you know that. Uh, what's that guy's <laughs> name, dude? Predator, he used predator. to fight. That, uh, that yeah, that bro. guy with the, he knocked out Arona in Pride. Are you talking about uh, Dan Severin? Or, uh, no, 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 no. I mean, uh, not the Predator is well. Um, the Predator. He looks yeah, like no, the Predator. Yeah, yeah. Was the, he black? No, no. Yes. yes. Hold on. Dan he was a judo guy. I beat him in judo. Damn. Not Dan Severin. Who is no, not Dan oh, Severin. No, Dan Severin's not black. No, 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 I know, I know. I was thinking his name because you. <laughs> I forgot his name. I'm sorry. I forgot his name. Man, uh, was in here. Damn, what's the guy's name? Um, wasn't should. Don Fry the predator? Because he used to wear yeah, the. Yeah, yeah, I know. But um, this dude, he looks like a predator with his hair. Yeah, the predator He's from. yoked up. He fought in pride. He, like he the... knocked out Arona and he knocked out. Who's the predator? The black guy that, that his name, the predator. He fought in pride. That's not a good name no more. The predator. You like now if that's your your fight name. You gotta change it. Not my name. No, dude. I know it's not your name. Your name is Tahit. But not I'm, Bob Sapp. No, Bob Sapp had never been no. the predator. This guy was I'm trying to think of black he, fighters in pride. He, dude, yeah, he knocked out Arona with an, and Nogueras little brother too. In pride. He knocked both of them out. 
He's I remember that. I remember he was that. from I think from uh Holland? No, he was from uh, uh Chris Barnett? No, no, no. He was from Randy's camp up uh, from Oregon, I think, for, for a, a second. A black guy? Soka Duja? Soka Duja? Soka, yeah, Soka Duja. Soka Yeah. Soka Duja. Wow. Yeah. I can't, yeah. yeah I, Soka Duja. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. What happened to him? Well, I'll t- <laughs> I don't know what happened to him. Let me just tell you something. <laughs> you guys got me. <laughs> Soka Duja. I remember that guy. All right? He's a beast. He's a Cameroon guy. He comes. Oh, that's where, that's where Nganya's from. Yeah. He comes to he, to the states. He smokes everybody in the heavyweight division and heavyweight plus. He beat the ex Japanese world judo champion. I swear to God. In judo or fight? In judo. Mm. I went against him in the final. You beat I him? threw him ten points. Ipon. Ipon. Yes. Ipon. It's part. Of, it's in my highlights, and I'm all yelling all wrong, crazy, but he was three times bigger back then, and he was super powerful. Were you on that shit? Him? I don't know, bro. He was like this, I and that guy him. started fighting MMA. And check this out. After that judo, I was 18 when I did judo against that guy. The next time I saw him, he was maybe I was in. I was 26, 27. He was pride already. The first thing he tells me, he goes, that day we did, man, I was so sick. I was throwing up. I'm like, that's the first thing that came to your mind that when you saw me, you had to make an excuse why I beat him in judo. It bothered him. You're a little bitty guy. Screw his ass. I was the fucking heat back then and he knew it. He bothered him. And I'm like, really? Seriously? (laughs) Why would you just come out and that's the first? Yeah. Why couldn't you say, hi, how are you? Hey, how you doing, man? You're doing great. I saw you beat up. I would have never even brought up. Brother, you know the egos with martial arts. You know people have I understand, egos. boss, but I never did. I, w- I had never had ego like that. Yeah, yeah. You never had ego like that. But never. A lot of, a lot of people do. Well, apparently. Hey. Before, we, before we let you go, I got to ask you a question. Yes, boss. Right now, you were talking about <laughs> MMA. You were talking about, you know. You're talking about bare knuckle boxing, talking about fighting. Mm-hmm. Seems like you're still in good shape. You don't look like you're weathered at all. You look no, young. I'm you just, the baby I'm face. healthy. I'm actually 200 pounds. God damn. Yeah, you look healthy. Are you trying to come back and fight? I wouldn't mind it, but let my, I'm waiting for my boy to be born. It's in May. And then um, that's pretty much a big, big, uh, motivation right there for me to come back and maybe do something and i'm only 41 years old i don't have mileage on me i can st- i have a gym i can train so there is n- i haven't retired officially ever so when I, until i retire i'm always open to fighting especially the mma you just talked about the, the, bare knuckle, yeah. the one you just talked about yeah bare knuckle yeah we that can, can call just bare knuckle. ignite put me that together yeah, Masvidal. You know Masvidal. Yeah, yeah. We could put that together. You could be George Masvidal. I also, I, I like, I like him. I, know, I saw, his, yeah. Just after he beat the in the UK, he won. Yeah. When he was doing an interview, I just saw that 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 sparkle in his. Yeah, he yeah. was like so happy, and I was like, I'm happy for the guy, man. He yeah. deserved it. He's a good dude. Yeah, you're a good dude. He is a good dude. Yeah, bro. you're a good dude. Thank I you. I want to, I want to see you get back down. I want to see you get in the ring and. Toss somebody. Hey, and um, absolutely, we'll take off hard landing. <laughs> and when we do some of those reactions, can we bring them back in for some of those reactions? Yeah, yeah. I would. I would love to watch can, some you fights. You think with you could uh, flip me real quick on the mat? See if you still got it. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want me to just throw you? Yeah, yeah. Don't hurt. Don't hurt. Don't no, hurt. I won't throw. Don't hurt me. No. Don't hurt me. No, 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 no. All right. Smooth, smooth, hey, smooth takeoff and a smooth landing. All right. That's all I want. Beautiful. All right, let's wrap this up. Okay, baby. Hey. Let's go in the gym. Let's go. Okay. Hey, thank you. Hey, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me, man. You're the man. You're the man. No, you guys are the man. All right, take us out. Take and no, we out. You take us out. No, you take us out. Take me. Take take us out like you took the girls out in in Kuwait. Oh, where were you? I, I wasn't in Kuwait. Where were you? I was in Japan and Vietnam. Yeah, we know what you was doing in Vietnam. You see him in Vietnam? No, you don't want to see what no, he was I didn't, doing. That I didn't post much from Vietnam. Yeah, we know why, bro. I'm gonna tell you guys something. She didn't let him. I'm gonna tell you guys something. <laughs> when I get when I get old, I want to I want to marry me like a nice young like thirty year old. Vietnamese woman that ain't never had no kids. Why Man. is you, why, you, why? why are you always going Asian? <laughs> why? Because they, they take good care nothing of them. There's nothing wrong likes, with them. He likes the, where, where the shoulder to... rubs he gets. I don't know. He's into the stuff. What? What? I'm supposed to say with my own race? You no. might not listen. No, oh, that's your, crazy. I, that's no, crazy. Hey, listen, yeah, that's crazy. That's, yeah, that, listen, no, no, your, your no. Soulmate, just talked that's about... That's crazy. Your soulmate might not be your own race. What's your soulmate, you think? 
Japanese? I no, no, no. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what she is. I'm you looking want a for a little Shibuya warrior. I'm looking for my soulmate. Uh, the only reason why I said you're going is because his previous Asian relationships haven't worked out. Because <laughs> he has 30 right. of them. <laughs> that's what I'm right. saying. You just have Stop. one, you That's okay. what I'm saying. Stop yeah. going no more. And none, of my, and none of my white relationships worked out. None of my black relationships or my Mexican ones or my Puerto Rican ones. Well, why, why don't you get Persian. a little, little heat in you? Well, why don't you just be a little bit humble? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not him, but whoa, whoa, like whoa, whoa, his whoa. background, his his oh, culture. Oh, oh okay, okay. Yeah, little, little why don't you? He, he won't even teach get me. Get him a little Armenian. I, I, I asked him how to say. <laughs> I asked him how to say. Do you like black guys in Armenian? And he's like, man, fuck you. I'm not teaching say, that shit. How do you say? It? He's not teaching me no. that. Uh, what? what did you say? What do you want? How do you like? Uh, do you like black guys in Armenian? Oh my god. Let's hear. How do you say? Do sefta gasirumes? Oh wait, my god! Wait, there's an Armenian girl that works here. Can we call her in real quick? Oh I just want to see what she in. says. Let me see what kind of Armenian girl you got working here. Hold on, hold on. I just want to see if she could, because she'll teach us an Armenian if you won't. I will. No, you won't. You won't. Okay. You're gonna trick. Hey, can you come in the podcast room real quick? I'm not there, bro. Are you Armenian? Yeah. Why? How do you say Armenian? Or how do you say what do you say? Do you like black guys? Do you? How do you say oh, do you like why? black guys in Armenian? I'm on a podcast. You're live. Go ahead. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Do you know oh how to speak God. Armenian? Yeah. Okay, how do you say it? Hurry up, we're live on a podcast. Oh, my God. Do Seth that I'm not going to see this? What I say? Yeah. Wow, Dusef he's getting all kinds of... She hey, said it's hey, full. Thank you. Do you like full? She looks exactly like Kim Kardashian. Oh my Great. God. Hey, I'll call you back. Thanks. I almost did a cover with Kim. Well, hey, mm. where? On a year of on Armenian magazine. He did a bro. cover with Kim Kardashian. No, oh, I said I own. Bro, dude. do you know how famous he? Do you no, know how I know, I know. He's, he's the first. He's the first he's Armenian, the first Armenian in, in the UFC. I the know first. this, but I didn't know he was doing work with Kim. No, I didn't say. I, I know you got smash, down like did that. You, did you smash Kim Kardashian? I, yeah. No. no blink ask twice. right now. Blink, ask right now. Blink twice if you smashed Kim Kardashian. Shut the hell up! Come on, man. You're killing me. No. Oh, he blinked. He blinked. Yes. It's before you was married that we know this. Yes. Bro, no, that's the Second Chloe, thing. Courtney, or Kim. Go in no, order. No, 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 no. Hang on. <laughs> Chloe ended up doing the cover. Oh, okay. So you did a cover with Chloe? No, I was gonna do a cover with Kim. Her, I think her mom. They put in Chloe, you quit. Up. I'm out. And then they they didn't put none of us. They just put Chloe, and I was like. I'm out. But did you shoot any photos with them? No. Did but you her meet, mom did, didn't make it happen. Did Chris. you meet them at all? Yeah, I met them. Oh, real Ooh. quick before we go. Yeah, Tower Rampage. I know what this you want to say. This way before your wife. This way before your wife. Way before your wife. <laughs> who, just ask him. Who but would if, you want out of the three? <laughs> if you had to choose Stop. Courtney, Chloe, oh, or Kim, man. you have to choose one. Yeah, you got to choose you, one. Armenian king, Armenian princess, you got to choose one. You got to choose one. Before, before or your Kendall wife. Or Kendall or Kylie. You could go all five. Choose one of the five. Or Chris. I don't know if you're into the old I ones. already chose mine, bro. She's Ooh. at home. No. I know. We know. Uh, we and know. she's so much prettier than man. all those Is your wife Armenian as well? Yeah, and she doesn't even, everybody thinks she looks anything but Armenian, but she is. What's she look like? She has like light green eyes. So, like, it's Good not man. even green. It's so light. It's an honorable dude. Yeah, man. He's like, I ain't gonna choose. But if you were to choose, <laughs> uh, Courtney's face, Kim's body. <laughs> We out, hey, we man. out. Jackson hey, Park. Much love. Hey, make sure you guys follow my brother. <laughs> Carparisian.com or you can go to Instagram, Carparisian. Yeah, That's it. All right, we love you guys. Thank y'all for joining us. Thank you. Let me see the judo flip right here. That was <laughs> you can't judo flip you right here. What?